Okay, lesson 6-5, calcul calculating the area using the distributive property. So we know the distributive property for multiplication. That is when we take, if we have 6 times 7, and we decide that we're going to keep this 6 the same, <clears throat> and we're going to break this 7 up into a 5 and a 2 because it makes it easier it's always easier to multiply by five and then to multiply by two so we would make that 30 and we would make that 12. they're going to add one additional step in here you're still getting to this point and still getting to this point but what they want you to see is that this is the same as six times and we're going to take this seven right here and we're gonna make it five plus two because we always do what's inside the parentheses first. Five plus two is seven, which is six times seven. So that's, we're just adding a, an additional breakdown step and then we take this and our six stays the same and we break up the five into five and two. We're still getting to this point. We're just adding an additional breakdown step, okay? So let's take a look here. Same exact problem. There you go, look how easy I made that. You can use the distributive property to break a multiplication fact into the sum of two other multiplication facts. Okay, so we have six times seven, okay? Our six stays the same. This seven right here is broken up into five plus two. So six times seven, because five plus two, you can easily Turn that back into a 7, and that's the same as 6 times 7, okay? So, what we're doing here now is taking this to the next step, where it's 6 times 5 and 6 times 2. So, we have our times 5 and our times 2, so that the 6 is staying the same, okay? Again, we know this. We're just adding one little breakdown step. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 12 is equal to 42, okay? So, when calculating area, it can also help us. Again, we want to do 6 times 9. We know our 9's trick, so you know how I feel about breaking down that 9, but that's okay. So, okay, 6 times 9, okay, we know that. We're multiplying by 6, so it's 50-something, and 5 plus 4 is 9, right? So, 6 times 9 is 54. Same problem here. 6... This is 9 up here, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's a total of our 9, but we're going to break up that 9. And we're basically going to split, oops, we're going to split this array, this whole big array up here. We're going to split it into two different arrays using my handy dandy phone charger cord. Okay? We're basically going to split it up into two arrays and say, well, this is. 6 times 5, this is 6 times 4, and then we can calculate it and add them together. Break it down, add it up, okay? So, here we go. Follow me on this. 6 times 9 is our original problem, 6 times 9. We're going to keep the 6 the same. We're going to break up this 9 into 5 plus 4, 5 and 4. Now we're going to break this 5 and the 4 up. The 6 is going to stay the same. Okay, 6 times 9. Remember, the 6 stays the same. The 9 is breaking up into 5 and 4, just like here, 5 and 4. The 5 goes there, the 4 goes there. Okay, so 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 4 is 24. Six times nine is 54. We're just breaking it down and adding up, okay? Let's take a look at the bottom one. So we have five, one, two, three, four, five, and it's a total of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's our six up here, but we're gonna break the six up into four and two. Super silly, five and one is way easier, but that's okay. 
we're not the authors of this uh, book, but I personally would break it up into five and one, but they want us to see four and two. So that's what we're gonna do. So our original problem here was five times six. So write that down. Five times six is our original problem. Our five is going to stay the same. See it's staying the same? So five times four plus two, right? So this six, the five stays the same the whole time. This five is staying the same. This six got broken up into four plus two. All we did was take this array and say, let's just break it up into two smaller arrays. A five times four array and a five times two array, okay? So again, bring down your problem, five times six. Okay, if our five is staying the same, what number needs to go right here? Five times something and the five staying the same, five and five, right? Our six, we're gonna break up into four and two. So the six, we're using the distributive property, breaking up into four and two. Again, our original problem, five times six. See how you have your five times six all the way down? They just want you to remember your original problem is, is five times six, which of course you know. So distributive property only needs to be used if you don't know it. But we have to make sure we understand how to do distributive property. So five times four, write that answer there. Five times two, write that answer there. Add them up and write your answer right there. Pause it. Okay, you should come up with 20 and 10, which is 30. So five times six equals 30. Which of course you knew, but that's okay. Now you can understand with a simple problem how to do distributive property. Okay, on the back. Draw a rectangle on grid paper. Well, you don't have grid paper at home. Maybe I'll remember to send some home with you tonight. Grid paper. Okay, hopefully you do have your grid paper that I remember to send home with you. You're gonna draw a rectangle on that grid paper and divide your rectangle into two smaller rectangles and use the distributive property to solve that equation. Okay, so let me just give you an example and then you can use your grid paper. I do not have a copy or a uh, extra piece of grid paper at home here today, so we're, I'm gonna have to do it without it. My best thing will be lined paper, but that's a pretty good substitute. So I'm gonna start, they want a rectangle. So I'm gonna do that here with your grid paper all you have to do is outline the outside of it because you're already gonna have all the little lines in there, okay? I am going to have to make some lines. Okay, and I have this one going across, and this one going across, okay? So let's, three and five, okay? So let's, I personally, okay, first I'm gonna write three times five equals, three times five equals, Three times five equals, and I think I needed a fourth time, I don't know. Okay, I am going to choose to keep the five the same and break down the three, okay? So, I'm gonna keep my five the same because I always like to multiply by five. I would never break down a five. But, I'm going to break down this three into two plus one. So now I'm going to use the distributive property. I'm keeping my five the same. This is gonna be two and one because I'm breaking up this three into two and one, okay? Five times two, 10 and five and 10 plus five is 15. And yes, we did know that three times five equals 15. And let's just say these are these are inches and inches. So our answer is 15 square inches. You can Yours can be feet or meters or however big or small you want them to be, centimeters. But you just have to, um, when you write the numbers on the top and the side, you need to say whether they're inches or feet or centimeters or meters.
Okay, great job.